the Spot Track Podcast, talking sports contracts, the salary cap, and business of sports. Welcome to the SpotTrack.com podcast. I'm Kevin Sylvester along with Paul Peck and the founder of SpotTrack.com, Mike Gennetti. And we have a lot of wire talk, a lot of things going on uh, contract-wise. It's a news and notes edition of the uh, SpotTrack podcast. Well, the weekly wire, as Mike wants to call it there. That's a good. We should patent that instead of the news and notes. News and notes is what it is, but I'm just everybody does news and notes. You've got the weekly wire. Yeah, it's just a, a busy time of year. I mean, we've got you know two leagues in front in, uh, in the playoffs right now, and obviously the NFL is ramping up for the draft, so it's just sort of a uh, some housekeeping, honestly, just to kind of look back and uh, see in the past week really what's happened financially and sort of talk about it a little bit. Well, the the, the most significant, I think, or at least the most discussed, only be, because it's a cowboy related maneuver, was the release of Des Bryant last week, and um, not a surprise. No. His production has kind of fallen. I think the timing was a bit of a surprise, but money wise, what did that do to the Cowboys? Yeah, I mean, it left a dent. They they did not designate him a June first release, which means they're taking the full eight million of dead cap this year. Um, which is fine. I mean, I mean, they're still saving eight and a half million towards their cap. Yeah, the, to me, the timing is everything. I, I don't understand from his stand, you know, point of view, why he why he's not released in March and has a legitimate chance to be one of the top receivers on the free agent market. Um, he's got to be extremely upset about that in terms of him and his agent going out there to try to find a team right now. But he do, he is the only one available now, right? So he's sort of the only man on the island. There's certainly teams who, after the draft. You know, are are going to have holes that they that they see, and there's certainly teams right now looking for him as well. But, uh, you know, just an interesting note with the Cowboys. This is while this is expected, they're now the second highest team in terms of dead cap for the, for 2018. So, uh, you know, a couple seasons ago, they were always up there with the Saints in terms of dead cap. They kind of got themselves out of out of the hole when the whole Dak Prescott uh, value hit, but they're right back in it. You know, the release of Romo, the release of Dez, that's 17 million on their dead cap. Uh, so they're in a, they're in a world of hurt in terms of that, and uh, they really can't do much more free agent wise because of it. And, and they're second. Uh, the Buffalo Bills yeah. are number one. So the Bills and Cowboys are one and two. Just how much is that handcuffing them this season? A lot, this a lot, off season, a lot. I mean, both of them will be draft heavy in terms of how they build the rest of their roster out, and uh, obviously the undrafted guys and things like that. But um, you know, you didn't see much with the Bills in the free agency. You didn't see anything with the Cowboys with free agency. So. Uh, it's a situation where they, they they were sort of planning for this. Like I said, no one's really surprised that Des Bryant's released. Um, the timing of it is terrible, in my opinion. I think it's awful. And, and awful know, for him or for the Cowboys or for both? I, for both. I mean, why not have that eight and a half million of cap space in March? You know, when there's when you're going to get guys like Alan Hearns and, and making a run at Sammy Watkins, for instance. Right. I, I I one other point on this. I'll disagree with you, Kevin. I don't think it handcuffs. I I think well, while, it, time. while it handcuffs <laughs> the teams to some degree, it, it in both of those cases. They they got rid of players and took the bullet now mm-hmm. to set themselves up to have lots of cap space in the future. So it's a either do it now or pay it later. So you know, yeah, maybe maybe uh, the Cowboys can't sign one more guy this year, but but I think you you got to do this now. You got to make this move and take the hit. Well, let's see that you know this is the difference between Paul and me. I, I'm like I want to win today. Paul wants to win tomorrow. So that's really the, the and issue, the, and with the, the tomorrow league. after that. Yes, too. which is a fa- no, which is all kidding aside, it's a very fair point yeah. in that they're paying for sin- past sins that didn't work out. And which in order every to- team has past right. sins, right? Every team has overpaid guys before. But you mentioned the Bills, and the, the Bills sort of plan for this. And if you kind of look at the last six months of how the Bills progressed here, you know, in trading guys like Watkins and, and Darius, and, and releasing a couple of players to go with that. That this was all sort of put together to be their big dead cap dump year in terms of 2018, right? They've, they've got a decent amount of cap space to work with for, you know, a couple of veterans they need to pick up to fill some holes. Obviously, they've got a nice big hefty draft pool with, uh, you know, six top picks in this coming draft. So there's going to be money thrown around still. But they're taking on $33 million in dead cap this year. They, they knew this was coming. They, they sort of had the writing on the wall in terms of how these st- contracts were structured. Um, and they're going to be nice and free and open for next year. So, yeah, it's really just a draft this year and free agency next year plan, and it looks like Dallas is sort of in that boat too. Uh, the other interesting signing of the week was a little under the radar, um, but Jarvis Landry, who had just been acquired by the Browns, yeah. um, you know, when, when there was a question as to what his future was really going to be, gets a nice big boost from Cleveland. I, I love the, the acquisi- acquisition of Landry. I think putting him with two young guys in Gordon and uh, – 
and and the rookie Coleman out there. I think that's a that's a great set for whatever quarterback is playing week one for that team. Uh, I'm well, you question it'll be Tyrod Taylor. I, that's what they're saying, right? That's certainly what they're saying. But uh, I'm with you. I feel like there's a lot of news still to come out of Cleveland in terms of the quarterback position. But I, I, I'm I'm shocked with the numbers that Landry's getting. I haven't seen the actual you know fully fully guaranteed at signings number numbers yet. That's probably going to come in the next 24 hours. Um, but 75 and a half million, putting 15.1 million per year to a slot receiver, who, and he's going to play slot receiver out there too. He's not. This isn't going to be a role change by any means. If anything, his role is going to be reduced because of guys like Gordon around him. Uh, it's a lot of cash for a guy who, look, he's been great. He's 1,100 yards. He's eight, he's eight touchdowns. He's 80 catches. But uh, that's a lot of cash for a guy who's in a role scenario, and that's probably only going to get reduced. Well, it's also interesting. They they got him after getting Tyrod, right, if I have the chronology Correct. Same yeah, bang, bang. day. day same day. Bang, bang. bang. Day. Right. Yeah. Tyrod Taylor's weakness is throwing over the middle <laughs> of the field, and that's where Landry works in the middle of the field up to hash marks. Which as is a why slot Tyrod might not necessarily be the opening. Well, day they're starter. drafting, and we'll yeah. talk more about the draft. They, yeah. they are clearly drafting a quarterback with one of their first two picks. Um, can we move on to yeah. basketball? Yeah. Because uh, watching uh, some of the playoffs, NBA playoffs, and with Steph Curry hurt, Kevin Durant certainly putting his best foot forward. Guy doesn't miss, it seems. Uh, inside the arc, he never misses. And he has decided to, uh, you know what? It's now my – I was a nice guy for a little bit here, but now I'm going to opt out. He's going to cash in big time, well, isn't he? Well, it's funny you mentioned nice guy because I think that's been the most glaring – point to be made with Kevin Durant this year is he's sort of turned into a villain. I mean, he yes. is, he's angry. He's getting technical fouls. He's getting thrown out of games. My uh, kid doesn't want to wear his shoes anymore because of it. Do you, I don't know. Is that just something that... <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's the least of his worries, Kevin. Well. But, uh, the, you know, you bought him. That's all he cares about. That's right. Um, he's got the KD and the shoes. Yep. But it's sort of tough to see where he's falling right now because he's a he's a guy who I don't think he ever loved this kind of spotlight. He's certainly okay with it. I mean, he's, he's Playing phenomenally, he, he he could run that team himself through the you know the first two rounds here. So uh, I just think it's interesting that he's already officially opted out in terms of what he said to the press, um, which is really not a surprise. I mean, he's going to get eight million more than doing so. I mean, the, the money is so sil- silly right now in terms of how the salary cap is structured. Um, he's going to cash in, but is there even a little bit of a chance that this is? You know he's going to go out and test the field a little bit. That that maybe he's he's had a good couple of years with these with these guys, and it's just a little too much to handle, and he wants to go show his face somewhere else. Listen, I, I'm a conspiracy. No, like I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'll, I'll look at connections. And he played with LeBron yeah. in the All Star game. LeBron picked Kevin Durant, and I wouldn't shock me if they played together. It's somewhere, perhaps the L.A. Lakers. Look, and now could they afford it? Can the Lakers afford both of them? Uh, probably not. But if LeBron's the one who takes less and lets Durant take the money this time to play together, I could see that happening. Yeah, I mean the the list of free agents who can be available. It's it's a it's an Olympic team <laughs> when you break it down. I mean it's it's ridiculous. And you're right. I mean that's the thing, right? They're going to buddy up somewhere. Um, and there's teams that have made themselves available: the Clippers, the Lakers. Look at even Houston <laughs> can right. can make this work if they if they're smart. Well, he's they, not going to Houston, not with Harden there. No, but LeBron might. LeBron could. LeBron sure. might, right? And, uh, you know, if you're putting other names out there, there's teams like what, the Wizards who, if they get eliminated in round one, they're going to blow that team up, and that's where he's from, Kevin Durant. He's, he's a D.C. guy, so is he going to go there and sort of re-salvage that franchise and bring a couple of buddies with him? So, look, at the opportunities are certainly there. There's money all over the place. You know, doesn't, you can get money wherever you want to go. It's just a matter of who do you want to play with and where do you want to be. And it just seems like he's had an angry year in Golden State. And I don't know that, you know, there's a long-term future for him there. Hockey-wise, we're in the midst of the playoffs there as well, too. And hockey is making news because uh, it, it seems as though they'll let stuff slide all during the regular season. And then when the playoffs come around, they put the hammer down on fines and suspensions. Yeah, it, it's sort of weird to me. I don't think that's ever been the case. I mean, I've been tracking this stuff for, you know, seven, eight years now in terms of these fines and, and the suspensions. And even just watching the penalties come in and injuries to go with it, honestly. Um, yeah, the, the playoffs have always been, you know, a, a more brash style of hockey and, and really fun to watch. It's fast paced, but I feel like the, the officials have come together and said we're, we're not going to let things get out of hand this year because the penalties have been, you know, every five minutes from the games that I've been seeing. There's been three top level guys suspended during the playoffs, which I don't think I've ever seen that in terms of you know recent history. So 
they seem to be policing it a lot better. I mean, the, the games are still there. There's goals everywhere, everywhere. I mean, there's five, six goals you know per game in terms of the games that I've watched. San Jose so. scored eight last night, yeah, I believe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a good brand of hockey, so whatever they're doing, they, they need to keep it up because they're certainly opening the ice up, which you is to, a good thing. You, you want to talk f- about a guy who's going to cash in, by the way. If Evander Kane continues oh, yeah. to score yeah. and gets San Jose through the first round and continues to, to pot goals – he is going. I mean, he was making a lot of money anyways, but he's a young player, can score goals, yeah. he's gritty. He is going to cash in big time, and it's his first trip ever to the postseason, and he really is performing. <laughs> Heck of a rental player, right? I mean, I mean, pretty unbelievable how he's just sort of flipped the switch from a, the worst team in the league to you know one of the best. And he's, I think, he's got San Jose as one of the favorites yeah, right now and out of you, the West. And if you look at what San Jose gave up to get him, yeah. it was not nope. Nope. nearly what was anticipated. It wasn't even a first round pick yeah, for Vander Kane. Unless he resigns they don't or sign they him, make yeah. the cup finals. If yeah. he resigns or make the cup finals, okay, then it turns into a first round pick. But there's conditions on it, which historically speaking, to get a player of that caliber at the deadline and not have to go up a sure first round pick was a steal. Yeah, but I mean, at this point, is a, isn't a first round pick worth what, what the production? Absolute. Well, that's what I'm saying. If, if he yeah. fits in that franchise like that, I mean, fifty that's 50 goals. Yes. That's 50 goals. They'll, they'll, get, <laughs> they'll give that up, uh, no, no issue whatsoever. Nazem Kadri's hit, by the way, was disgusting. Yep. Uh, There's been a few. There's yeah, been a few. I thought, that, I thought the play on Tyler off. Myers was pretty dirty, if you saw that. that was, you His know old what? teammate. <laughs> yeah, Felino with my that, that was interesting. It, it was an Street awkward. Street hockey. Put the hand out there. And <laughs> it was a little awkward, too, while I went down there. But, yeah. Yeah. No, I, no, I just, it wasn't. It, it, you know, you say, wow, well, for a hit on Myers, and you think it's this, this running, you yeah, know, leaping seven blast. Foot three, right. Right. It's a little different uh, and interesting. Yeah. It shows you in the playoffs, right? Hey, you know, Bygones are bygones. It's been right? good. I mean, there's, it's a different brand of hockey. Usually, we're seeing you know fast paced but kind of gritty hockey. And like I said, because of these penalties, because they're calling everything, it's been wide open. We're seeing a ton of goals. It's been fun. I wish the NHL would figure out a way to make that kind of intensity yeah. work during the 82 games. Got to shorten that season through don't you think? first to get to the playoffs. All right. Speaking of ice. It's baseball, where there's as much ice on baseball fields around uh, MLB as there are in NHL playoffs, and uh, and that has raised some tempers and some led to some fines and suspensions there, too. Yeah, speaking of which, right? I mean, top-grade teams, big-time players, charging the mound, throwing punches, throwing bats. It's been a... Uh... That was a heck of a first week there in terms of, you know, all these postponements and, and and then, yeah, to go with this. And not to mention the teams at the top of each division are probably, you know. Starting to run away with it a little not bit. Not so much that, but but did anybody pick Pittsburgh? Did anybody pick the Mets? Did anybody pick, you know, the, the teams out of the West? I mean, the Angels look like total burners out there. I mean, yeah. they've got the the the, the, West, the Houston Astros on their heels already. So, uh, been a fun start in terms of that, but yeah, there's been you know a couple of really nice brawls. If, if that's your brand of baseball in April, uh, but again, the, yeah, I think it's all weather related. People just don't want to be out there, and you know, uh, luckily we haven't seen any major injuries yet to, to these pitchers that are you know out there throwing 100 pitches into 35 degree weather. But I, I feel like that's just something to come with this snow right now. I was watching the Yankees Marlins game with my son the other night. Boy, the Marlins are sick. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look good, does it? No, it does not. It does not look good at all. <laughs> yep, that was I believe last night, right? You're talking about 12 to 1, 12 to 2 that yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just no defense. Yeah, it's a tough it was, tough game. It was it was pretty is finding out it's a little more difficult to build the team when you don't have all kinds Derek of money Jeter behind it. He wouldn't even come to he New York to watch the game. The game. Really? Yes, no. cuz it yeah. would have been weird. Yeah, he didn't I think want it's to weird. field questions. <laughs> it's weird that you're not there, Derek. I think it's weird that you shed 200 million in payroll and now you're going to win 12 games. Yeah, they, that is fair <laughs> credit. <laughs> I think they're lucky to win 12. Oh. I mean, they just, oof, they look tough. Although while I was at Disney with my family over the Easter break, I saw so many Marlins jerseys yeah. and hats. Yeah. And I was like, I was surprised at how many. Well, they had three superstars last year. <laughs> the, these look new. These look like uh, new. Really? Yeah, I didn't recognize any names in the back of the jerseys. All right. <laughs> uh, a name we do recognize, yeah. pretty incredible, is Bartolo Colon. 44 years old, and he's still getting it done and you know, twenty-one batters. His first twenty-one that he faced on Sunday. How much? How much money has Bartolo Colon made in his career? That's the question for you. I know. Oh, okay. I know. I know. Twenty years in the league. Twenty years. This is um, twenty. Wait, let me. Started in nineteen ninety-three with the Indians. He's making three hundred grand in ninety-three. Two hundred million. Hang on. no. Um, Too high. It's high. That's high. I think two hundred high. I am going to say Bartolo Colon. You said he started. In, I'm going to say he's made ninety-five million. 
A little more. He's at 114 right now. 114. Wow. 114. Okay. For 20 years, I mean, he's what, put a lot of miles where is on it, does it rank? Where does it rank all time just on longevity? I mean, I know he's not been the highest paid guy, but a, but that's a lot of money. He's the longest tenured yeah. right, right now. But I mean, yeah. the money-wise, is the money even anywhere close no. to? Nah, no. Just because he hasn't been a superstar. Oh, How much no. weight has he gained throughout <laughs> his career? No, I've, like because right, he was a he was a very lean pitcher right when he started. He was a flame-throwing pitcher, yeah. He so were you, you when you uh, when it's you got to be 100 started. pounds, don't you think? I, no, I'm, I, I, you know, I okay. bet it's 100 pounds. Yes, Paul, point taken. Um, <laughs> Did you hear the story on the, during the game? Actually, I weigh the baseball? same now as I weighed in eighth grade. That's a true story. All right. <laughs> Did you hear the story on Saturday Night Baseball about how uh, I think the Indians had like a weight a weight cap on him, and they made him weigh in, and he, every time he weighed in, he'd make like 12 grand if he made his weight. But his response was, "I don't even care." He didn't his, even he try. Didn't, I, it's that, that's not what I'm here for. He said, "I'm here to have fun and play baseball," and he almost never made weight. <laughs> That's so, okay. So he know? doesn't care how much he's making, clearly. No, I just yeah, but, no because those remember when he started and then the, when yeah. he came back, right? You're like, whoa! It, he is a marvel to watch. If you're any kind of baseball fan, find time to watch him before he retires because he is the current version of Greg Maddox in terms of pitching. He can make a the ball move any way he wants with finger pressure. It's pretty fun. Well, it's pretty fun to watch. I want to say this about in all seriousness about weight. Um, I'm not going to name a player, but a professional hockey player who started out a little doughy and was great. And the team made him get in shape, and he was never the same since yeah. he had to get in shape because he was miserable, hmm. was not happy, just walked around miserable, hated the workouts, just couldn't stand it. And teammates <laughs> would comment that, you know what, they should just let him stay a fat guy, and he would have been he would have been fine. Do you think it affects – his pay, Bartolo Clone, because people think, well, he's not in any kind of shape. He he, he can't be a long term option. No, because I think astute baseball people now know, you know, it's but, the, I mean, the analytics never, of it. They pay him based on analytics now, right? But he's never cashed in. I mean, early in his career, he was a great pitcher, right? A great yeah. pitcher. All well, stars. because now at this age, at forty four, there's only so many innings in the arm. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, these days, right? Uh, these days, nobody's right. given but, him I mean, really, more I mean, than he, a one year deal. He's never been over seven. Seventeen million was his high. That's what the signing bonus. He's never made really 10 million a year ever in a game that has no cap that you could pay whatever you want. I mean, he's just been viewed as a, an okay pitcher, but 20 years later, here we are. I mean, right. Something happened. Well, maybe he's the new Don Sutton, you know, just been kind of, but you know, what, what are his career wins? That's like he's not approaching, he's not at 300. I mean, he's not, no, uh, he's, I think he's well off that. Yeah. Well, well off the pace. Yeah, he, yeah. He's what he is, is remarkable. It is, it's a remarkable story yeah. that he's able to, uh, continue in Major League Baseball, age 44, and the comeback that he's had. Yeah, nearly a perfect game Sunday night. So, yeah, something something to keep an eye on for sure. All right, we're going to transition now um, away from Bartolo Colon, and he wouldn't care what I was talking Wait, about. Wait, well, I'm, uh, I'm oh, you got it? 240 career wins. Well. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. That's pretty good. When uh, considering you know uh, the, how long it's taken to get there as a reliever and all those things, you have right, 240 right. career wins, pretty good. Let's talk about the NFL draft because uh, we're that is next week the NFL draft and teams actually have to keep cap space yeah. to sign their draft picks. Yeah, I mean obviously they're not going to sign them as soon as they draft them, so you, you, you know it'll wait till middle July generally, the second week of July or so, and, and most of those signings will come through, and you'll have some discrepancies in terms of the offsets of the you know, the first round picks and all that works. But the good thing is with this rookie wage scale, everything's sort of set in stone, right? Everybody kind of knows where they fall. And, and we've been able to project the, all of the rounds in terms of the draft pools to kind of show where each team lies. And, you know, obviously teams like the Bills uh, and the Colts who have a ton of draft picks up there early are going to have your higher draft pools. But, yeah, this is something to, to think about, not only from a positional standpoint, but from a cap standpoint, because, you know, for some teams, it's going to be a pretty decent dent, you know, $10 million dent in, into, into their 2018 salary cap. But for those drafting a quarterback, yeah. and I think this goes back to what we were talking earlier about the Cleveland Browns and just who's going to play quarterback. If they're going to spend the number one overall pick mm -hmm. on a quarterback, and let's say it's Sam Darnold, he's going to play for them. You would think. Right? I mean, and they don't have to. They don't. The, the Browns have su such cap flexibility. You know, they could throw Tyra Taylor out there for one year and, and sort of let this thing ride out. I mean, I mean, they're okay. I mean, I mean, they're, the the number one overall pick is going to cost about six million in cap this year. So 
you know, which that's is not, very that's nothing. It's nothing. That's it's nothing, nothing for a starting quarterback. No, and there's the no and the, and the, 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 the there's no rhyme or reason or definite way to say going about doing it. You you Carson Wentz started from day one. Jared Goff did not. Yep. Uh, Jameis Winston did. Mariota did. Uh, other guys have sat for a year. So you know it'll it'll depend on the situation and the player and how quickly they take to things. But yeah. but I think the point you're making, Kevin, is eventually the number one pick in the draft or a first round pick a quarterback is going to likely play play at some point during his rookie year. So so maybe the point, though, to make is the, the wide receiver discussion because clearly they're loading up, right? I mean, they've got Gordon for maybe a couple, two more years based on how his, his restricted free agency is going to play out with his, all his suspensions. But a guy like Gordon with Landry now, I mean, now is the time to see, you know, what you have in a quarterback. So, so maybe they look at their team and say, we're ready to at least put an offense out there. And if they, you know, they want Josh Allen to be out there with them, then that's probably the way to go, yeah. All right, you have some yeah. hot takes, yeah. some predictions. Yeah, who doesn't, right? For the NFL, NFL the draft. <laughs> Instead of a mock draft, you have some predictions. So why don't you fire away with your first prediction? Yeah. And well, then we'll poke holes in it. Well, maybe. Well, well, I do. I do think, from what I'm hearing, that Josh Allen will go number one to the Browns. That does seem to be where they're living, which means Sam Darnold is going to be available, right? And and everything that sets else, off a frenzy. At, it does. At number two. It does. And really, you know, these big wigs who are deep inside the Giants front office do not think that the Giants will trade or take a quarterback. That the Giants have their eyes on Barkley or Chubb, and that's the way it's going to fall. It makes sense to me. I, it does. I, I think I think you got to take a, you got to get a good player. You know, everybody wants to justify trades, and and if you're particularly in a team that is looking to move up, you 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 know, the Giants are going to say, what what are the extra draft picks going to do for us if we have the chance to take a difference maker like a Bradley Chubb right. at number two? Right. I think if Allen goes one, the Giants take Darnold at number two. I think they I think they take the quarterback to replace Eli Manning so, down the road. So my prediction is they don't at that Darnold falls to the Jets who get the best quarterback in this draft and the Jets end up getting now, the getting the Now everybody is already <laughs> assuming the Jets have been locked in on Baker Mayfield which is not based on anything but if all of a sudden Darnold is available right. see this is what's interesting right. is Darnold I think would most teams will tell you is probably their first choice but most teams probably don't think they're ever going to have a chance to get at him that's, right. that's where the feeding frenzy is going to happen at two and three and four, if he's still available, that's right. That's right, and I and I think that's probably how about what the Browns happens. are on the clock at four and Darnold is still there. And have already drafted Josh Allen. Yeah, then you got it. If trade, it goes right? Allen, Chubb, Mayfield, yeah. man, teams are going to go nuts trying to get that that fourth overall Tra- pick. Drafting Mayfield with Darnold on the clock, with or, Darnold available, would be the, the, just or do the you Jets take Barkley move. and you ignore <laughs> the phone calls? I don't think you can ignore the phone calls. I think you ha- at some point the Browns have to stop trading down and start taking players. Well, all I've read all week is that if the Bills are willing to offer three firsts, are, is anybody going to take that? Is well, the, the Bills have the, to offer three firsts, in my opinion, to move up. In the top three. To mo- I think even move up to top five, they got to offer all three firsts. We'll, we'll the, get two to this that. year we'll and one that. next year. All right. We'll get to that. All right. You're, you're- so my prediction is Darnold is not one, Darnold is not two, but Darnold goes three to the wow. Jets. I don't think the Giants let that happen. I would think so, but that's not what I'm reading. That's okay. For sure. All right. <laughs> so to to go with the Giants, I do think they take Bradley Chubb. I do think he becomes the next, you know, Jason Pierre-Paul for that team. And uh, I've actually mentioned that they, pr- they probably should add a fireworks clause to that in that rookie contract. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so they can keep their guy wow. for more than six years. <laughs> you must hire a special fireworks Look at, assistant. I've read these contracts. There are some interesting clauses, but uh, you know, a fireworks. What's the, clause, what's the most bizarre one? Oh, that you can off the top of your skydiving, head. Right. skiing. I've seen quite a few. Nick Foles, man, I saw Nick Foles' contract last year. He's got everything. Is this guy like a uh, an adventure guy? Is it because he does that stuff? I, I would think. I mean, maybe some of it's just standard, you know, protocol, sure, and they're I just think. in all the contracts. But some of it was so specific that there had to be some sort of well, inkling that this guy's going to go out there and jump off a cliff or something. There was the cannot ride a unicycle while, you know, uh, <laughs> firing a bow Juggling and arrow. Juggling chainsaws is not allowed. Yes, during rush I, I hour. I don't think playing with fireworks should be that complicated. It should be in all NFL contracts, yeah. right? Well, it should actually just be in normal society. Uh, all right, so now we've drifted you completely off the top. No. You had a good no, point you going to make here. It's a very hot take. That's a hot take. It is a hot take. Yeah. Bradley Chubb, number two, no fireworks. Uh, so, yeah, back to the bills back to the bills uh you know like you said it's going to take you know peter paul and mary to get up to two and three or to two let's say they're not going to three so 
So I do think they'll get to six. I do think Indianapolis is the team that wants to get out of there. They, they're, they're targeting an inside linebacker. They don't want to be at six for that. Um, and I do think Josh Rosen falls to number six where the Bills trade up and draft him. Boy, I, I think that, you know, it's a lot. It, it probably doesn't cost you num- next year's number one to be able to get to that point. So yep. I think From the Bills will be more than happy to go yep. and throw in a two and a three or whatever else it's going to take. Yep. Uh, I, I it, To me, the tipping point for the Bills that they have to make the decision on is, are you willing to give up next year's number one or not? They have if to. you are, then you can get into the top three. If you're not, then you're hoping to get to five, six, or seven. I don't even think you, I don't think you can get to two with just next year's number one. Well, I think maybe they don't feel more. like they need to. And, and again, yeah. it all depends on which quarterback that they like the best. But I'm telling you, if Darnold is sitting there at at three, or if the Jets take Mayfield at three and Darnold's at four, and that I, the Bills and a lot of other teams are going to be wearing out the phones trying to find out how to go get a guy you never thought you could get that low in the draft. So let's talk about that next because the number four pick is is part of my next take and it is the Browns and let's say they have taken Josh Allen and obviously Saquon Barkley is going to be the top available guy on the board there outside of you know a defensive player so if the Bills come with three first for the number four does it it will it take that, three first or will it take two first let's just a say second and a third let's just say it's a crazy overpayment the okay. Bills offer three first because they want Sam Darnold so the Brown, you're asking if the Browns going to pass on Saquon Barkley that's then. what I'm asking for three firsts yes Yes. Yes. I think that's too much to say no to. As much yeah. as you, and, and again, I think that's part of what'll be interesting about the Browns is they've just had this habitual habit of trading down, trading down, trading down, and letting good players go by. At some point, you have to stop doing that, yep. and you have to start drafting and, good players. And, th- and John Dorsey's a guy who has a track record of knowing who good players are. So if you're asking me to go against what you're saying, I could see John Dorsey going. You know what? I can't. I, I want good players, and Saquon Barkley is a very good player. Thanks, but no thanks. Mike, is your house for sale? It is not. Well, what if I offer you a million dollars? I know. I know. I just think Saquon Barkley is one of those guys you've got to at least think about passing on that deal for. So your house is for sale for a million bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure yeah. because I, I think that's kind of the scenario. Now, I like my house. It's a good spot here. I, you know, I'm... Oh, a million bucks? I could like a lot of other places. I can like a lot of other players, three other players, you know, two later on here. And I could probably take those two and get a little higher from 12 and 20. Like, why couldn't the Browns do what the Bills did or were looking to do to move to take eight or 12 nine? 12 and 22 and move back up yes. into to why seven not? or eight. Yeah. And they got another pick next year. Absolutely. Well, they and could do and it. that's what's super intriguing about all of this is. How do they think about that? How you know are, are are they under orders from an ownership group that see them try the multiple trade route to failure? Uh, is it, don't do that anymore? Is the GM being told go draft good players and let's stop messing around here? You know we we need to start winning now. I mean the Browns need to start winning now. And frankly, it wouldn't shock me if the Browns won a decent amount of games this year. They're starting to build what appears to be a decent team. There's no question, and that's why I think at least considering Barkley at four has to happen because he's a he's a missing piece right now. I mean, I mean that is an that is an offensive weapon they just don't have. If anybody who likes Duke Johnson, fine, but Saquon Barkley, Carlos is Hyde, not they Duke also Johnson. signed again, who's a serviceable right. to, to above average running back. That's right. All right, you have one final draft. One take. final take, and I, I wanted to get the Patriots in here because obviously they made some noise when they traded Brandon Cooks and got that second first round pick. I I, I can't see them changing face just because this is a quarterback-heavy draft, right? I can't see them doing what they've never done, which is trade up or, or even take a first-round quarterback. It's just, not, it's just not what they do. And I don't see them doing that this year either, even though there might be guys like Lamar Jackson available later on in this first round. Um, I think they wait. I think they trade out. That, that pick they acquired, I think they trade it out like they always do. <laughs> Guard themselves an extra second or an extra third and fourth, whatever they're going to do. And I think they've got their eyes set on Kyle Aletta. I think that kid out of Richmond is – Probably the the right fit for that model. I think that's the guy that fits the Garoppolo, you know, game plan, the Brian Hoyer game plan, whatever they, whatever they they've been molding over the last three years. Matt Castle, he sort of looks and feels like that kind of quarterback, and he gets the benefit of sitting and waiting, and he can wait for two years. Does he get to bring what might be the best college football helmet with him <laughs> to New England with the yeah. spider logo? The spider logo on there, it's awesome. I know. Just you know, you look at that, you're like, yeah, that's I, I want that. 
That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think you're dead on right. No. I, there, there's nothing that sh- that to, there's no reason to think that the Patriots no. would take a quarterback in the first round. No, uh, you know it's just not how they think, and and they have very. If you look back at their first round picks, they always tend to be very specific positions uh, that that are not necessarily the flashy. You know, they rarely take receivers and running backs in the first round. They, they, it's core group guys, core guys, usually yeah. DBs or or linebackers or or offensive linemen or deep. And, they need, they need a lot of it this year. I mean, they've lost some significant players at free agency. So it's not like they're just sitting there with nothing to do. I mean, they've got some holes to fill. So, yeah, I can't see it. There's going to be second-round, third-round guys that they're targeting, um, and they'll move up to get it if they have to there, but they won't do it in the first. All right, great stuff. We'll, uh, we'll keep track of these and see which ones, if any, uh, come true. But I like I, I like it. I like that you're, you're going out there on the limb. It's not just a mock draft. These are no. predictions on the mock draft. Um, hey, if you want to check out team salary caps in the NFL and the room they have for their draft pool, Mike has that up there, Spontrack.com. Uh, so much more, every sport, all the great information, the money of sports, and we're heading into uh, what is a, a great week as we – and, of course, we're all Mets fans too, so we're waiting to see you if bet. the Mets can continue uh, this very, Let's go Mets. very hot start in the cold start to the baseball season. For Mike Gennetti and Paul Peck, I'm Kevin Sylvester. Thanks for listening to the Spontrack.com podcast. 